In this video, we're going to take a look at Booleans in ZBrush. Booleans are a way of generating new meshes by subtracting one mesh from another, adding a mesh to another, or creating a difference between two meshes. So to illustrate this, I'm going to open up a polymesh star. This is just the default null object here under the 3D meshes. I'll draw it on the canvas, then go into edit mode. Now with Booleans, we're going to use a lot of the 3D gizmo and the primitives here. So I will convert this star into a polysphere primitive. Now I'll just leave it at its default settings. Press the W key again to bring the gizmo back. We'll go to the subtool menu and then duplicate the subtool. I'll move it over and then let's change this to a different tool. We'll change this to a cylinder this time and perhaps we'll increase our resolution so it's smoother. Now here in the subtool palette, you'll see that we have these icons next to our tools. By default, they are these two circles. If I take the second subtool, the cylinder, and I change this to this icon here, which is subtraction, this tells ZBrush that I want to Boolean subtract this mesh from the mesh above it. So to see this in action, we need to turn on live Boolean. Now you see what it's doing is it's subtracting that cylinder from the sphere. Now if I select the sphere and then transpose it using the transpose gizmo, I can move it back and forth and that cylinder is still there subtracting. If I move it here, it appears to disappear. If I scale it up, that cylinder is cutting a hole through it. If I move it over, we get this. If I select the sphere again or the cylinder again and then change its scale, I can change the way it affects the part that it's subtracting from. And if I go to Shift F for frame mode, you can see the mesh is still here. It hasn't disappeared. It's just not drawing on screen because ZBrush has been told to subtract with it. So let's say I scale this down in the Y direction and scale it down in the X direction and then move it into the center of the sphere and then turn off frame mode. You see we're cutting a hole right through the sphere. Now this is Boolean geometry. This is not actual geometry yet. So how do we make this into actual geometry? Well, what we want to do is go to the subtool menu and under subtool, we have a Boolean option here. Now, if we're not using folders, then we will use the Boolean under this menu here. Just click make Boolean mesh. And there you see it's created a new Z tool called UMesh. And this is actual geometry. If I turn on frame mode, you can see that it is actually cut away that cylindrical shape and then fuse the vertices so it's part of the same piece of geometry. Now, if I go back to our subtool where I have the two subtools together, and in this case, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this Boolean. Now I've got the sphere inside the Boolean folder and I will click and drag to bring the cylinder inside there as well. Now the cylinder is sitting underneath the sphere from which it's going to subtract. Now I'll turn off frame mode. So you see that we're, we're still getting our, our Boolean effect, but it's still, it's not actual geometry. This is the preview Boolean. If I turn live Boolean off, the mesh has come back. I'm on this, the polysphere right now. If I divide this, I can increase the subdivisions on it and get a smoother effect. Now, the other way of executing Boolean is to click the gear icon on the folder, and here you've got the option to Boolean folder and Boolean with dynamic subdivisions. Now, we have a whole other chapter where we talk about dynamic subdivision levels. This is essentially just a way of previewing what a smooth will look like without adding geometry. If you have dynamic subdivisions on one of your meshes, you'll need to Boolean with dynamic subdivs. Since we don't, we can just use Boolean folder. And this, I think, is the easiest way to Boolean because it automatically hides what's inside that folder and gives you the new UMesh as a subtool. So let's go ahead and delete that new UMesh and we'll take a look at what happens if we do a Boolean using dynamic subdivisions. I'll turn visibility back on on this folder. So right now we've got the sphere. It, is, uh, it has the cylinder subtracting from it. So let's go ahead and make a new Boolean object. I will just duplicate that cylinder. Let's move this off and then we'll change this into a different primitive. We'll change this to a polycube. Now this polycube, if we go to the geometry menu, you see it has no subdivision levels. I'm just gonna move this off, maybe scale it down in the X axis, scale it in Y, 
and just bring this down so it is interpenetrating the mesh. Now I'm going to add a dynamic subdivision level to this. Now dynamic subdivision levels are added under the geometry menu, dynamic subdiv. And if I turn on dynamic, you see that that gives me what appears to be a smooth. However, you see we don't have any smooths on here. We talk about this in more depth in other sections, but in a nutshell, this allows you to use plug it or use uh, brushes and operations that require a single subdivision level on a mesh that you want to appear smooth. So, for example, I could use insert multi mesh brushes on this dynamically smoothed cube, and they would work, and it would still give me the appearance of having dynamic subdivision or having actual subdivision levels. So. If you want to turn dynamic subdivision levels into actual subdivision levels, you click the apply button. But we don't have to do that for our Boolean to work. So I'm just going to change the scale on this. I'm going to scale this out like this and bring this down. And we're going to use a different type of Boolean here. I'm going to go put this inside the Boolean folder. And let's change this to the Boolean um, difference. So now you see what's happening is that cube is trimming anything that's not inside of it. So if I scale this down, you see we can get a real interesting shape here. Now this cube, of course, is a dynamic subdivision. So that means if I want to bake these down, I click the gear, and instead of Boolean folder, I do Boolean with dynamic subdivisions. And here we have our mesh. Go into frame mode, you can see that that's actually geometry. So that's the basic functionality of Booleans. Let's take a look now at how we can make a prop using Booleans inside of ZBrush. Along the way, we'll look at using the folders to organize our pieces and parts, and we'll also see how you can use Booleans to transfer materials between objects. So let's do that now. So here we've reset ZBrush. I'm going to go back to my tool palette and select that PolyMesh star, draw it on the canvas, and go into edit mode with the T hotkey. We'll press the W key to bring up the gizmo, and we will just turn this into a polysphere. Now, we're looking right down the z-axis. I'm going to snap to a side view, so our knife that we're going to make is going to point right down the z-axis. So we're going to create sort of a, um, a combat knife, like you might see in, um, you know, on, a, on a military character. I'll go to the gizmo for scale, and I'm just going to stretch this out like this and then squash it in the x-axis to start giving us our blade. And I'll add a couple subdivision levels to this. And now I'm going to go to the gizmo, and under the deformers, I'm going to use the uh, deformer. I'm going to just use um, the standard deformer here. Now it's telling me that the mesh is con composed of multiple subdivision levels. So this is an instance where you might elect to use dynamic subdivisions because the the um, deformers under the gizmo won't function with multiple subdivisions. In this case, I'm not going to use dynamic. I'm just going to delete my lower levels under geometry and then go back to my deformer here. Now, the way the deformer works, if you have not watched the video actually on the deformers, if you control click and drag on the background, it will clear the selections of the various points. If you control click drag on some points, it will select the the inverse. If you control click on the background, it will then invert that selection. If you mouse over your gizmo here, you can change these points by scaling them. So let's go ahead and, oops, let me undo that. Let's go ahead and move these up and then we'll grab that scale and scale that down. I just want to bring this to a point. I just have to move off center a little bit so I can grab that. And I just want to get a nice edge to the top of this blade. I'm going to bring it up to about there. Now I am going to press the gear and I'm going to accept that boolean or that uh, that deformer. Now I want to further sort of refine this mesh. So what I will do now is I will go to my gizmo and I will use the flatten. These are all in alphabetical order so flatten will be right there. And I'm just going to flatten the top. Bring that down. There we go. Now if we zoom in, you can see what we're getting here. We're getting a nice flat top on that blade. And then I can flatten this edge here, like so. And there we go. Now if I want to accept this change, I will hit the gear icon and click accept. 
Now, perhaps I want to add some serrations along the back of this, this blade. I'll go to my subtools. I will just duplicate the blade. I find it easier sometimes just to duplicate an object rather than to create a brand new one. I'll press the gear icon and let's select the cylinder 3D to make a new Z tool. We'll rotate this 90 degrees, scale this down, bring this up in the side view here, zoom in and scale it down again. We're going to make the negative space of our serrated edge. So what I'll do for this is just go ahead and make sure that we don't have any subdivision levels and I will go to B for brush, T for trim, and I will use the trim circle brush. Click OK and then control shift click and drag. This creates a circle. If I hold down the alt key, you see it carves away what's inside that circle. So I'm just going to create a little serration here, just like this. Take my move brush, make sure that X symmetry is turned on. And then we can just shape this a little bit more. And let's add a subdivision level. Oops. Just want to get that looking nice and sharp. Now I'm not too worried about these sort of um, pinches along there because what we're going to do is make this a subtraction object as you see here. So now I'm starting to get a bit of a serration there. I'm going to scale this out in the Z axis and then let's turn on frame mode, solo this, and maybe I want to have a little nook that comes up right here. So in that case, I'll go to B for brush, T for trim, and we'll try to do this with the trim curve. Sometimes you need to change from the trim brush to the clip brush, just depending on the results that you get. If I press control shift, click and drag, I get this line. This is the trim curve, and it will trim away everything that's on the uh, feathered edge of that line. So I will bring it up to here, let go, and of course I have subdivisions. So I need to delete those subdivisions, and then I will redo that. Bring it up to here, and it's not quite working, so let's do it again. We'll just bring it to here. Double tap the Alt key to make a hard angle and bring that down. And I'm going to turn off X symmetry and see if I can't get a better result. Mm, yeah, so we're going to have to use clip. So I'll go to B for brush, C for clip, and do the clip curve brush. And I will do the exact same thing. Just double tap the Alt key, and there we go. So sometimes the surface responds really well to the trim brush. Sometimes if it doesn't, you need to use the clip brush. We talk about these brushes in depth uh, in the brush chapter, but just so you know, the trim brush physically cuts away geometry. This geometry up here was cut away when I used the, tr the trim brush. The clip brush flattens that geometry up against the surface of the model based on where my curve is. So in practice, you don't see a difference, but that difference in the way the two brushes behave gives you a different result. For example, if I do the clip circle brush here, Watch the difference that we get in this little area where we scalloped away our serration. If I hold down the Alt key, you see that's a much more aggressive clipping. So turn off solo and turn off frame mode. And now because I did that extra clip there, you see I'm getting some negative space. So I'll just undo that. And there you see we're getting that little blade edge there in our serration, which looks pretty wicked and nice. I'm going to go ahead and scale this out. And this is just my Boolean object that I'm scaling in Z, just to give myself that little cutting edge there. And I could stretch that up and down in the Y axis. I could even rotate this to change the angle of that serration. So we'll do something along those lines there. Now I'm going to unlock my gizmo, reset it, lock it again. Now I will hold down the control key and click and drag, and that will duplicate that object. I'll move it as far as I need to move it, then let go of the control key and keep on dragging my brush, or the transpose line, I should say. And now you see it has duplicated those serrations. So bring that up a little bit. Clear the mask. Actually, let me turn on frame mode so you can see what that's done. That's just duplicated those, those Boolean objects. That's all that's done. Now. It's also put a mask on everything but the last duplicate. So I'm going to control click drag on the background to clear the mask. 
And that way I can move all these pieces up. And if you see a couple little like hanging faces as you rotate, that's typically just a draw error. That will go away once you actually create Booleans from your Boolean objects. So that's not something to worry about if you do see them. So there we go. So now we've got a serrated edge along the back of that blade. So I'm going to go ahead and save my work. And by the way, I will have this file available for you in the downloads for this chapter so you will have it to reference. So now let's start to organize our parts. I'll come to the subtool palette here and I will create a new folder and I'll call this blade. And this is the blade itself so I'll rename this subtool and call it blade as well. Actually we want to be careful about having groups and subtools and different subtools with the same name so I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this, I'm going to call this blade model just it's just good practice to do that some plugins like uh, transpose master will actually have a problem if two subtools have the same name so it's just good habit to get into to give things different names we'll move this up the serrations we'll select it rename it and call it serration subtract now I'll select the blade, and if I want to make a change to the blade, I can still use my deformers here. I can just go back to my deformer, and here you can see that I've got those points selected. Once again, maybe I want to increase the resolution along um, the, the Z axis here. So I'll do something like this, and control, click, and drag, and we'll just select these. Control shift click drag oops, control click drag. There we go. I just want these points here. So control click and then I'll move these down. So you know what, let's go ahead and add some of these other points to it. Let's go ahead and select all of these. And we'll move these down. And then I'm just going to remove these points here. Let's move, remove these points. Let's move these down. And then let's get rid of these points and move these points down. And I didn't intend to put that little kick in there, but I actually kind of like it, but we'll get rid of it. Bring these up. And then bring these down. Get rid of this point here and just get a nice line there. There we go. And I'll get rid of this one. And we can just get a little bit of a shape change going down the length of that blade, like so. Then I will press the gizmo gear and accept. So now I have changed the shape of that blade one more time. So now let's add a new part to our knife. I will go to Append and I will select the Polymesh Star and that will add outside of the folder for the blade. Select the star, go to the gizmo and we'll change this to a polycube. Turn on frame mode, we can see that our resolution is actually pretty good. We can use this, we've got enough faces to work with. I'll press W for transpose and I'll move this back, scale it in the Z axis, scale it in the Y axis. And then let's scale it in the x-axis. This is the crossbar that will protect the hand of the person who's holding the knife. Scale this down a little bit and then bring this back so the blade actually sits inside of this crossbar. Now I'm going to go to the gizmo again and select the deformer once more. Now I'm going to use the deformer to add a little bit of a bend to the end points on this, but I don't have enough points yet. So if I turn this up, I can increase the number of points I have. Control click drag will clear my selection. Control alt click drag will select some points. So I can move these back in Z, but I want these to move as well. So you'll notice that we have uh, mirror options here. So we have Y symmetry, and that's currently set to zero. So if we change the Y symmetry, we can change our selection there. We have our Z symmetry, we can change our selection there. And we have our X symmetry, where we can change our selection there. So what I want to do is I want to, this is the Y axis that we're going along. So we should have our symmetry along this axis here. So let's go ahead and select these and move them back in space. And you see that that propagates to the opposite side. 
press the gizmo and accept. Leave frame mode and there we have our crossbar. So I'm going to go ahead and save my work and we will go ahead and put this into a new folder and we'll make this folder crossbar. So I'll create new folder crossbar. Now that is in that particular folder. Now perhaps I want to put a um, a dynamic subdivision level on the crossbar. I'll come down to the geometry, dynamic subdivision menu, turn on dynamic. Now here I've got some options. I can change the Q grid, that's the quick grid based subdivision. I can turn that up to three or there we go, two. And that's smoothing it but maintaining the faceting. If I turn this back down to zero and I adjust my um, smooth subdivision levels here, I can change how smooth it becomes. That's two subdivisions, that's three subdivisions, and these are dynamic, so we don't actually have subdivisions yet. If I turn the Q grid up to, let's say, two, let's bring that back up to two. There we go. We'll put it at three. And we can adjust our flat subdivisions here. And then we'll change our coverage, and we can give a bit of beveling to that. There we go. Let's turn that up. There we go. So now we can put beveling into that smooth, and that will be applied once we actually apply that geometry. So looking at this, I think I could move that crossbar down, so I'll just take the move gizmo and just scoot this down a little bit like that. And then I want to make the handle. So to make things easier, I will just go to append, polymesh star, that creates a new object outside of the crossbar folder. And I'll go to the gizmo and turn this into a cylinder 3D. Now our resolution's pretty good already. We can adjust that with the curves or the cones here to change our resolution. Go to the transpose gizmo, move this back, and we want to scale this in the Z axis so it's long enough to actually be a handle. And then we will scale this down and perhaps we want to scale it in the x-axis so it's a bit easier to hang on to. And if I hold on the Alt key, I can move my pivot point here, and then I can scale from this point. So I can position the handle so it's countersunk into the blade and the crossbar, and then I can scale it down the z-axis so it's a good length to be a handle for that knife. And then I can just adjust its position so it has a nice proportional feel with the rest of the weapon. Now I'll go ahead and save my work. I'm just pressing Control S to save my work, and my save dialog comes up off screen, but it's the same save dialog that you always get. I just want to tell you as I'm saving, because it's good habit to save often as you're working, because it's terrible to lose your work. So turning off the gizmo so I can actually see what this looks like without any sort of manipulator in the way, I see that I kind of want to change that, that handle a little bit. So I'm just going to scale it up in Y and scale it back in Z, and then maybe move it down a little bit more. Great, so let's go ahead and put this into a new folder. We'll call this Handle. And I'm going to duplicate the handle just because it's sometimes, like I said, easier just to duplicate an object than to append something else in. With the, the handle copy selected, I'll go to the gizmo, and I'm going to turn this into a polysphere. I'm going to make a pommel for the blade using this, or a pommel for the, the handle, I mean to say. So I'm going to scale this down and then move it back in the z-axis. And let's scale it in the x-axis a little bit and scale it in y and scale it in Z, and maybe add a couple subdivision levels to it so it's a bit smoother. And this can be the pommel. So I want to make this a separate object from the handle. So I'm going to move this out of this folder. And I'll do that just by clicking and dragging until it comes out of the folder. And I'm going to make a new folder for this, and I'm going to call this pommel. And let's go ahead and name our, our objects now. We'll call this Pommel, Base. And we'll select this one, and we'll rename this and call it Handle Base. So with our handle, I want to create, oh, by the way, you notice the Pommel disappeared. I just need to turn on the eyeball next to it. So with the handle selected, I'm going to duplicate it again 
And now this time, I'm going to go to the gizmo and I am going to create a new object. I'm going to create, this time, a ring 3D. And I will turn up the resolution on this ring 3D so it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to go to my gizmo and I'm going to scale it down so it's intersecting the handle. We're going to make kind of an, uh, uh, a texture along the length of this handle. I'm going to set this to subtract. Now immediately, because live boolean is turned on, I can see the result of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust my scaling on this until it looks like what I want it to look like. So we can scale this up, maybe go into frame mode, go to our gizmo, go to ring 3D, and I want to change the inner um, radius. So I'm just going to adjust the radius of that. Then I'm going to go back to my transpose gizmo, turn frame mode off so I can see just the effect that I get from that um, boolean. So let's change our scaling here. Turn on frame mode so I can see what I'm actually getting. Bring this down, bring this in, turn off frame mode. And maybe we'll scale this in the z-axis a little bit. That's That's good. Now, I want to show you something very interesting that you can do with Booleans. If I go to the handle, and if I take the handle and let's assign a material to this, I'll go to my material menu and let's just assign the matte cap gorilla, this nice matte black. I'll go to material, color, fill object. Now I'll go to the subtraction here, the subtraction object, and let's rename this so we can keep things straight. We'll call this handle ring, subtract. And I'll change the material on this. If I change the material on this object to, let's say, green metallic, you see that the Boolean will pick up that material assignment. So this is pretty good. What I will do now is I'll do that same technique I used before where I hold down the control key, click and drag to duplicate an object. So let's zoom out so we can see the full length of the handle. Undo, hold down the control key, Control, click, and drag until I get that moved as far as I want. Then let go of control and keep dragging, and it will duplicate that along the length of the handle. Clear my mask, and you see it picks up that material along with the Boolean subtraction. So I will go to Material, Color, Fill Object. So that subtraction object is now filled with that material, so I can go back to my basic material too, and only the handle is picking up those two new materials. So let's go back to our pommel. I will duplicate the subtool, bring it inside the pommel group, transpose, move it back in space, and then we'll just scale this down. And I'm gonna make this a subtraction object by turning on subtract. You see there we get a nice subtraction. I can change my scaling on this, and then perhaps I will duplicate this again. Now, if I bring this back into this folder and then scale this down, look what happens. I can countersink that, and we get this nice little bit of detailing in the pommel. This is my original pommel shape. This is the pommel subtract. So let's rename this, call it pommel sub. And then this can be like a stone or a, a jewel or just a bit of detail. And you'll notice it's not being subtracted. Well, that's because it's not sitting up here between these bits here. So if I were to put it above the subtraction object, it will be subtracted as well. If I move it below, it's no longer being subtracted. There we go. Now, if I wanted to make some further adjustments to this, let's go ahead and solo this particular subtraction object here that we're using. If I go into frame mode, let's say um, I just want to be a little bit more intricate with the shapes that are being um, subtracted out. So maybe I put a mask along here. And let's do a polygroup. Let's make sure that we don't have any subdivision levels. I'll delete my subdivision levels. And I will go to polygroup group masked. 
So that gives me a polygroup based on that masking there. And then let's do another. Let's make sure our X symmetry is turned on. Let's do another mask through here. And we'll do group masked. And let's go to our geometry. And we'll go to edge loop. And we can cut group loops like this. If we just click, click group loops, it'll cut loops around our individual polygrouping. And then I will go to my deformation menu here. And I've got a polish by features. And if I turn polish by features up, it gives a little bit of a polish to those groups. But if I turn on this radial button and then polish by features, it gives a much, much stronger booly, or, um, smoothing. So what I can do now is control shift click to isolate these polygroups here. Let's isolate this one and this one. Mask everyone else. Reveal all again. Now we'll turn solo off. Turn frame mode off. And you see we're picking up the masking actually from that, um, that Boolean object. But what I will do is I will use inflate to move out those unmasked faces. So look what's happening here. As I inflate that out, it cuts this notches into that into that surface that it's, it's booleaning out of. If I go to frame mode, you can see what's happening here. I'll undo this. And I can use the inflate slider, or I could just use the move gizmo and just scale this out like this. Maybe I can move these back. You see what's happening? This is a subtraction object. So if I turn off frame mode, you see it's subtracting just like so. And that's a really neat bit of detailing there that would actually be a real pain to try and model under other circumstances. That's one of the things that I really love about Booleans is they make these sorts of shapes quite simple to make and then they'll bake down into proper geometry which you could then, if necessary, remesh or they're already suitable for 3D printing. So there we've got our adjusted pommel. So we'll come back up here to our subtool menu. We have our pommel group, our handle group, and we have our blade group and our crossbar group. So these are Booleans. I'm going to collapse all these folders and I'm going to turn off live Boolean. And that brings all the aggregate parts back. So I'll save this before I do anything else to it. Now, like I said, Booleans don't exist as actual geometry. It is a Boolean operation that you're seeing in preview. If I want to make this into actual geometry, all I need to do is go to each one of these folders. And of course, you could do the Boolean option down here, but I think it's much better since we're using folders to do it this way. Also, the folder Boolean option, it comes after this. This predates folders. So this is actually an older way of making Booleans than what I'm showing you. So for Blade, I'm not using any dynamic subdivisions on the Blade. So I can just turn on Live Boolean, click the gear, and Boolean folder. And then I will get a Blade here. The crossbar, I am using dynamic subdivisions, so I will Boolean with dynamic subdivisions. It will automatically hide the, the crossbar folder and then give me a new bit of geometry, a new subtool that is the crossbar itself. So that's pretty handy. So we're able to do normal subdivision levels or dynamic subdivision levels depending. Usually you would end up using dynamic subdivision levels if you were going to be adding, like I said, an insert multi-mesh brush detail, like maybe some bolts or something. You would utilize the dynamic subdivisions for that. The handle, I will hit the gear here and I will Boolean folder. So this isn't, sometimes you get this message, the Boolean operation was successful, but several warnings were reported during the process. So you might just want to check your subtool at this point. So I'm going to select the handle and I will turn on solo mode. Now here what's happening is it's giving some, some errors in the material, probably because it just doesn't have enough faces there to support it. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and go to the basic material, material, color, fill object, and just check. And yeah, our geometry looks fine. There was just an issue with the materials there. So now let's go ahead and Boolean our pommel. Let's turn solo off. We'll go to our pommel and then Boolean folder. And now our, our pommel is Booleaned. If we select that, let's solo it and go into frame mode. You can see it's created the geometry quite nicely, actually, based on our Boolean. Now what I would like to do is just drag these down to the bottom so they're all together. 
and it's automatically hidden the other folders. And then I will just put a new folder together here and call it Boolean Knife. And then I'll put the aggregate parts together into the Boolean Knife folder. So this just keeps everything nice and organized, turn solo off. And there we go. We have our Boolean knife. So this type of geometry, if you were to, to sort of hand model this in Maya, it could be pretty time consuming, especially for something like the pommel or the handle. This allows you to very quickly and easily create complex shapes right here in ZBrush using Booleans. And the accuracy of the meshes the Booleans generate once you bake them down into proper geometry is really impressive. I think it's a fantastic solution for creating hard surface and props, any sort of complex objects that you might find that you want to create. Before we complete this look at Booleans, I just want to show you something really quick that I think is really neat about ZBrush ZRemesher and Booleans. If we take a look at the pommel here, now obviously this is not an organized mesh, this is a Boolean mesh. What we can do is, we've got pretty good polygrouping here, but if we go to the polygroups menu under the tool menu and just click group by normals, it will give me a polygroup for each set of faces, whichever direction they happen to be facing. Then if we go to the geometry menu and open up the crease submenu and click crease polygroups, it'll crease the edges along each polygroup. Now, if you go to Z Remesher, turn on keep creases and detect edges, turn these two on and then Z Remesh it. Watch what happens. We get a really solid remesh for free. That's an automated remesh just with one button press. And that's something really strong about Booleans and ZBrush, especially with the updated Z Remesher from a couple of versions of ZBrush ago and when they rewrote the Z Remesher. So it dealt with hard surface forms better. So that is really exciting. And I just wanted to point out how simple it is to do a retopology on a Boolean mesh like that. As long as you cleverly apply polygrouping and creasing, you can get a really good result. So that is Booleans. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the, this tool set. Like I said, it's one of my favorite additions in the past few versions of ZBrush. And I use it quite a bit whenever I have to create accessories or costume elements, um, hard surface pieces and parts. It's just a lot of fun to use. And I think as you explore it, you'll see that it works really nicely in conjunction with another tool, uh, which is called Snapshot 3D. Now we have a whole other chapter on Snapshot 3D. Uh, if you are watching in order, I know sometimes people watch my videos out of order, jumping around to what you're interested in. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, it is there in the chapter. Snapshot 3D utilizes the uh, spotlight to create geometry and then Boolean Booleans in conjunction with that to create complex forms. So I recommend that you take a look at that if you haven't watched it already. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.